you are a sci-fi film fan, you could have seen this concept. Yes, it is not a fantasy now. Liquid breathing is in the experimental stage and the success on that would be a great step in all areas of science. This is about a fantastic reality, liquid breathing. All humans spend their fetal stage in a fluid-filled cavity hence their lungs are filled with fluids. Those fluids are replaced by air with the first breath after the birth. So our lungs are familiar to fluids. So is there a way to use a fluid to carry oxygen to lungs? That's the beginning of this amazing concept. Portable liquid ventilation the system. The fastest minimally invasive way to cool cardiac arrest patients in the hospital and in the field. Within minutes of cardiac arrest, the interruption of normal blood flow called ischemia starves the brain and vital organs of oxygen and nutrients. There are a number of medical techniques used to induce therapeutic levels of hypothermia, but none can be administered as simply and cool as effectively as the portable liquid ventilation system. Packing a patient in ice or ice water drops brain temperature a few degrees over several hours. If skilled medical professionals are available to catheterize or cannulate a patient for cold lavage or cardiac bypass, these procedures can take 35 minutes to an hour to cool the brain by 3 degrees. But using the liquid ventilation system, first responders can produce this temperature drop in as little as 15 minutes without an ice bath and without invasive procedures. Why is liquid ventilation so much faster and more effective? Because it uses the patient's own lungs as powerful heat exchangers. First, an endotracheal tube is placed into the airway of the patient. With cardiac rhythm restored or supported mechanically, the liquid ventilation system's delivery tube is connected and the system is activated. The system's computer then begins delivering carefully controlled cycles of ice-cold liquid and oxygen in and out of the patient's lungs. The liquid is a perfluorocarbon that does not damage the lungs. It supports both rapid heat exchange and gas exchange. As all of the body's blood passes through nearly 70 square meters of the lung's surface area, the ice-cold perfluorocarbon removes heat and delivers oxygen. Cooled blood from the lungs then circulates normally to the brain and the rest of the body, cooling tissues as it travels. Warm perfluorocarbon from the patient's lungs cycles back to the liquid ventilation system. A heat exchanger submerged in ice water cools it again before recycling it to the patient. Sensors carefully monitor the patient's temperature and continue liquid ventilation cycling until the desired degree of protective hypothermia first challenge for scientists was to find a suitable liquid. After so many experiments they have found that oxygenated perfluorocarbon is the best for above purpose. The one common property is their high solubility for respiratory gases. In fact, these liquids carry more oxygen and carbon dioxide than blood. Successful experiments have been done for rats and sheep up to now and also used in humans in some occasions. There are various benefits of this invention not only in medicine, but other fields also. Main objective is to be used in pediatric medicine especially for treatments of acute respiratory distress syndrome in premature infants. Theoretically it reduces pulmonary inflammation and reduces the chance of bronchopulmonary dysplasia. It is a better method to administrate drugs pulmonary. In addition to that a research has found that it improves the recovery from cardiac arrest of adults. This would be used in deep water diving and space traveling also. It reduces the chance of nitrogen narcosis, oxygen toxicity, air embolisms, burst lung, and collapsed lung. Liquid breathing takes an important part in literature as well. 
The concept was initially highlighted in a science fiction called The Amphibian Man published in 1928. The first video which used the concept was UFO TV series telecasted in 1970. Now the literature is going to be real. Imagine you are immersed in a liquid, your lungs are filled with water, they begin to vomit burning pain, and then nothing happens. You remain conscious and continue to breathe, but how? In the near future, this could be made possible by liquid breathing. The first experiments on fluid breathing were carried out in the 1960s on laboratory mice and rats forced to inhale saline solution with a high content of dissolved oxygen. This mixture allowed animals to survive for some time, but it could not remove carbon dioxide so the lungs of animals were irreparably harmed. Later work began with pluorofluorocarbon PFC, and their first results were much better than the results of experiments with saline solution. PFC are organic substances in which all hydrogen atoms are replaced by fluorine atoms. PFC have the ability to dissolve both oxygen and carbon dioxide. They are very inert, colorless, transparent, cannot damage lung tissue, and are not absorbed by the body. But is there a real need for a person in this? There are three promising ways of using this technology, medicine, diving to great depths, and astronautics. Divers have one big problem. Due to a sharp decrease in pressure, a case on disease can begin in the manifestations of which the gases dissolved in the blood begin to bubble with vesicles. Oxygen and narcotic nitrogen poisoning are also possible under high pressure. Struggle with all this with the use of special breathing mixtures and they don't give you any guarantees but only reduce the likelihood of unpleasant consciousness. Liquid breathing could provide a new solution to this problem. The respiratory fluid, in contrast to expensive respiratory mixtures, does not saturate the body with helium or nitrogen, so there is no need for slow decompression to avoid caisson disease. By the way, remember the moment from the Abyss movie in 1989 where the main character was to wear a suit filled with liquid to descend to the Mariana Trench? Turns out, this scene is closer to science fact than science fiction. In medicine, liquid breathing can be used in the treatment of premature infants in order to avoid damage to the underdeveloped bronchi of the lungs by pressure, volume, and concentration of oxygen in the apparatus of mechanical ventilation of the lungs. To select and try different mixtures to ensure the survival of premature fetus began already in the 90s. During space flights, liquid breathing would perform a different function, namely, that would save the cosmonaut's body from strong overloads. If a person is immersed in a liquid, then during overloads the pressure will go to his entire body and not concrete supports, seat backs, seat belts. This principle was used to create the Labelle Overload Suit, which is a hard suit filled with water, which allows the pilot to retain consciousness and performance even when the overloads are above 10 grams. This method is limited by the difference in the densities of the tissue of the human body and the fluid used for immersion, so the limit is 15 to 20 grams. But you can go further and fill the lungs with a liquid that is close in density to water. Completely immersed in a liquid and breathing liquid, the cosmonaut will feel the relatively weak effect of extremely high overloads since the forces in the liquid are distributed evenly in all directions, the limit will still remain, but it will be high. In early 2016, it became known that the experiments on the creation of liquid breathing again resumed. The results of the new experiments are known only that they are conducted on dogs and that at the moment dogs can breathe for more than half an hour at a depth of up to 500 meters without health consequences. Despite the uniqueness of liquid breathing, there is one problem that modern scientists have to solve. The breathing fluid is viscous and poorly removes carbon dioxide, so forced ventilation is needed. To remove carbon dioxide from an ordinary person weighing 70 kilograms, a flow of 5 liters per minute or more is required, and this is very much taking into account the high viscosity of the liquid. With physical loads, the amount of necessary flow will only grow, and it is unlikely that a person, 
will be able to move 10 liters of fluid per minute. Our lungs are simply not created for breathing by liquid, and they themselves can't pump such volumes. Yes, our lungs are technically able to breathe a certain oxygen-rich mixture. Unfortunately, while we can do this, but only for several minutes. Would you like to try to breathe such a liquid? Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more.